G'day guys, welcome to another video, Sailing Learning by Doing. Here in Thursday Island, I'm about to leave. I'm packed up, I've got some diesel. It rained a lot last night, I filled up the water tanks. I got some bananas, a little bit of bread, and uh, yeah, ready to start heading south. <clears throat> the winds look pretty terrible, the weather looks shocking, but uh, yeah, there's no point staying here. It's just another day that I've lost going south. So I'm just gonna crack on and see how we go. I'm a bit skeptical of the weather reports. I'm dubious, I'm cynical. So I'm just gonna pretend that they're not saying what they're saying and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna see what happens. I can always turn back if it's too ferocious. Alright guys, we're on the move. We are sailing. You might be able to hear the engine in the background. Um, it's one of the reasons I actually decided to leave today. It's been cloudy like this for the three days that I've been here and my batteries are getting a bit low. I got a hodgepodge battery set that are a bit cobbled together with um, old ones from Greg and Kick back in Raja. And uh, yeah, they're not very good. So. Need to run the engine unfortunately every now and again and I would have needed today anyway so that's why I decided to go because instead of setting it anchor and running the engine to charge the batteries I might as well at least be going somewhere. So it's only 20 miles over to Cape York and it seems like a good anchorage. So I'm going to stay there the night and then see how we go in the morning. But yeah at the moment we've actually got wind so the engine I've just got ticking over for the batteries. and. Uh, we're sailing for the first time in a little while. Pretty stoked. It's very different here. The water's not at all clear. Um, helicopters and planes buzzing around. That's the airport right over behind me there. It's on Horn Island. It's the airport that services all the outer islands here. In Indonesia, you've got outer islands everywhere, but they're all serviced by longboat and dugout canoe with an outboard. Here in Australia, they fly. It's a bit quicker and easier and safer, I guess. Cool. Well, I'm going to... Uh, Settle in, it's probably only about four hours. We're doing five knots, so it's only four hours over to there. I'll anchor on the northernmost tip of mainland Australia. Pretty cool. A lot of people, grey nomads, etc., drive all the way up there in their four wheel drives. It's quite an adventure. Um, there's no tarred roads and things, so I, I don't know how far, but the last few hundred kilometres anyway. I mean, I think from, from Cairns onwards, it starts getting a bit rougher and uh, quite an adventure, they've got to go through quite a few rivers and creeks and if it rains then they can't get through and have to wait and things like that so quite a few of the grey nomads do that come all the way up in the, in the winter time in the south when it's cold they'll come up here and um, and then apparently they leave their cars and caravans there and get a, get a boat over to Thursday Island for the day to hang out probably get fuel and stuff as well and then yeah I was talking to the taxi driver in town that's why I know this he was saying that uh, in about June, July, August, it's sort of the season up here for grey nomads coming from Great Cape York. So anyway, we'll uh, continue on. It's probably going to be a, a lot of sailing and maybe swearing at the weather in the next few episodes. I know you guys, we'll try, we'll actually we'll give you a mix, mixed bag, you know, we're not planning and, and obviously we can see on YouTube which videos do better and we should just be concentrating on those but we make videos about just about what we're doing so right now i'll be sailing a lot there won't be a lot of great underwater adventures and cultural experiences it's just me trying to get south um and yeah is what it is and then other times when marie's on board we don't have any sailing in some of the videos at all it's just visiting towns or you know like in Missoula, there was no sailing, it's just zipping around the dinghy, so that's what boating, that, that's what cruising life actually is. So for those of you who really want to watch sailing, well, yeah, I guess, you know, either just skip the videos that show culture and things like that, but it, it's what life is, it's full of, full of uh, surprises and, and different stuff and it's what keeps us making the videos because if we were just making videos that you want to watch or some of you want to watch that would be boring for us so hope you uh, understand that anyway enjoy the rest of this all right well autopilot's on boat's doing its thing 
We're, having, we're cruising along at oh, we're at 5, 5.2 knots, it's alright. Engine's just ticking over as you can hear. And yeah, no one around. Gonna make a coffee and a sandwich. It's about uh, 1.30 p.m. right now. Another couple of hours, another three hours we'll be there. Getting used to it. It's a bit different here in uh, Indonesia. It's all deep water or very shallow. Like it's just shoaling straight up to reef. And around here, it's five, six, eight meters deep everywhere. It's crazy. To get used to the anchorages are gonna be much shallower around here in uh, Raja Ampat. To begin with, I was shocked and then after a while, you're happy to find a 20 meter deep anchorage. You're happy because that's shallow. Whereas here, and then you sort of get used to that and like, you feel nervous anchoring in seven meters because it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa I don't know. But uh, here, you can anchor. I was anchored in six meters the last two, three days. It feels safer. You put out 40 meters of chain and you've got a massive scope. Um, yeah. Yeah, get a coffee going and see how we go. We're tired today. It slept pretty good last night, but maybe still a bit of a hangover from the last passage. Nearly out of my Indo coffee. I got given this one by my great friends in Raja Ampat. It's good uh, proper coffee from Cuba, I think. Yeah. Look at that, it's even better. It's toasted, roasted and packed in Vernon. Wow, this is my own coffee. It's gonna taste fantastic. I think it's uh, Cuban beans. Yeah, and obviously been roasted and packed in uh, America. You. But it's from my town. I've actually been to that town, Vernon. Good old milk powder. I actually bought a couple of uh, a couple of litres of UHT milk in the shop the other day. Gonna splat, splurge and get liquid milk. So uh, I don't have a guidebook for this coast. I used to have Alan Lucas, you know, he does the whole east coast uh, of Australia. Really good guidebooks. He's done about, I don't know, 10 editions or more. But I, I gave it to someone when I left Australia. I need to get a new one. But So I'm just going off looking at charts and things to find anchorages for this trip down. I should be able to find one of those guidebooks in Cairns, but I, there wasn't any here. But it's sort of pretty, pretty easy. So basically, it's going to be southeast wind, which is the opposite of what I want. But I'm looking for anchorages on the northern, north, north, northwestern side of islands or reefs to rest behind. If I get to those places and they are not sheltered. That means the southeast wind isn't blowing and then I'll just keep going because it'll be wind that I can use. So whenever there's wind, I'm gonna sail. And if, if I'm tired, well, yeah, I have to just put safety first, obviously. And yeah, I'll show you this coastline. Basically it is mainland and then reefs. And then the whole rest of it is taken up with the shipping channels. And there's massive, massive ships that come down here. A guy I met in TI is a pilot boat captain. He was saying some days they have 15 coming just in. Massive, massive ships. And they're doing sometimes 20 knots down there. So there's hardly any room to go off the side of the channel and get out of the way of these guys. And if they're moving at 20 knots and I'm doing five or six and they're coming against me, that doesn't give me much room to see over the horizon. So sleeping's gonna be a bit of a mission. I'll have to be awake a lot. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to balance tiredness and safety up with still being able to make the miles. Once I get down to Cairns, the reef starts angling away from the mainland a little bit. And so you've got more room to maneuver. There's more deep water. The shipping channel is a bit further offshore. So that's a bit better, but this first 600 miles nearly, it's pretty, pretty gnarly. And I've never sailed up here. But yeah, I mean, whatever, learning by doing. We'll figure it out. But I better go outside and check there's no one around. Check that there.
No, nothing around, but the wind's died down, so I'm going to crank the engine up a little bit. Yeah, 12 miles to go, so it's not very far. Another couple of hours. Well, three probably. Yep, anyway, sit in. Make a, gonna go and make a peanut butter sandwich in a minute and we'll have a bit of tucker. If you get back my Australian lingo. So we're coming up on Cape York now. Uh, as I said, northernmost tip of mainland Australia. That big squall over there, that sort of sucked all my wind out about 45 minutes ago. So I'm just motoring, but I'm just actually going very slowly. Because it's been tracking to the east, this squall. And I don't want to be just arriving the anchorage when that's there because yeah, it's just I won't be able to see where I want to anchor and uh, get blown around on that. So I'm just, I've slowed down and I'm hoping that'll just ease out to sea just before I arrive. I don't care if it's raining because there's always wind first and then rain. I don't really care if it's raining when I get there. I just don't want to have 30 knot gusts when I'm trying to anchor or see where the coral is and things like that. So I've just slowed up. I'm only doing three and a half knots and um, well, let that big elephant have the right of way. He's like a big ship. I'll just let him go. And hopefully he doesn't just sit there. <laughs> we'll see. Well, the school's coming. It's starting to spit a bit of rain now. But I think the most of the wind's gone. But obviously here is where the rain is. So it's probably going to get straight on me. I've still actually got three and a half miles to go. So... It might be just, yeah, it might be just on me. Of course I didn't have the camera running, but a Spanish mackerel just jumped out about five meters in front of me. Huge one, about two meters long. And it jumped about five meters in the air, just a huge arc. And I saw the whole thing from start to finish. Normally you just see the splash at the end, but I saw the whole thing. And it was such a perfect glittering blue silver. Amazing. I've never really, I've seen it a couple of times, but not that close and such a big Spanish mackerel and I don't have my line out obviously but tomorrow I'm going to have the fishing line out and I'll try and catch something because I uh, didn't buy any meat or anything to bring on this trip so it'd be good to have some fish now I'm in Australia I should not catch so much plastic as I did in Indonesia but yeah that was incredible I wish you guys could have seen that all right she's raining now it's, uh, Probably 15 knots of wind, but I think the wind's not going to be much of a drama. It's just the uh, rain's coming up now, but yeah, I've just idled right back. I'm doing three knots just with the wind, and uh, hopefully the worst will be over by the time I get there. I'll just time it right, hopefully. It's quite cold. I haven't been this cold in the, in the rain. Normally in Indonesia, you sort of look forward to the squalls because it cools you down a little bit, but this is it's quite cold. I've got goosebumps. It's quite a nice sensation, <laughs> something new. I'll have to actually get a rain jacket. Like we've got no wet weather gear on the boat because we just haven't needed it for four years now. So I've got a poncho that we bought in Indo to ride a motorbike. It's just basically a plastic bag that goes over your head with a hole in it. So I'm gonna have to get some uh, wet weather gear, some Gore-Tex stuff or, or worst case, just some of that yellow roadside worker stuff from the hardware store. Probably gonna need that more in the future because getting cold at night well, getting wet at night is probably going to end up getting pretty cold from now on, so yeah, I might need to think about that. So the most of that squall has passed now, which is good. The rain stopped. There's still a bit of wind from that direction. I think there's probably more squalls rolling through. There's definitely one up in front, but I can't imagine it's coming this way when the other one just came from this way. The reason, I'll show you on the maps why I want to have a, a reasonably clear entrance. See, I've got to uh, come in between these, these little um, reefs here. So it's not a super straightforward entrance. And it's only four meters deep, so I, I don't want to have, you know, dealing with 30 knots of wind and, and bad visibility and all that sort of stuff while I'm coming into there. So that is my reason for slowing down and it worked out quite good. You just, um, especially because I'm by myself, normally, you know, if Maria was here, she'd be up front standing on the dinghy looking out. So I'm by myself, I've got to be a bit more cautious and uh, just, you know, play everything in the best odds that I can get, you know. And if you're partially blind, 
and getting blown around the boats not reacting as it should because of wind and currents I don't know what the currents are going to be like you just don't really want that so you're rather off to stay out here in deeper water and um, arrive there when it's when it's calmed down and I think that's going to work out pretty good the visibility around here is pretty good now and I should yeah it should be another 20 minutes and I'll be in there black over that way I can't imagine that one's gonna come here maybe you can see in the distance there the lighthouse it's a white speck on the top of that hill that's not actually Cape York this is a little island Cape York is this knob that way all right we're sort of in the middle of the bay we've got four and a half meters of water as you can see it's very black very stormy looking but relatively calm now i think this looks like a pretty good place to throw the anchor down so i'm going to do just that it up pretty dark looking here pretty dismal and desolate to be honest it's um oh, just pull this hell in tight yeah it's funny this sort of seems to me that it's the top of Australia and all that and I can see a little can of rocks that people have piled up and I think on the rock the very last rock there's a pole or the sign maybe I'm a bit far away so tomorrow morning I'll um I'm gonna sail through that little gap there and I'll probably see it better but uh yeah, I don't know. It's just a long, long way away and very uh, remote, I guess. I'm sort of expecting some other stuff here, like a, a big tower or something, but pretty cool. But uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, and obviously thanks to your patrons and PayPal. The old wallet's already taken a hammering here in Thursday Island, clearing in here. Um, I bought a new EPIRB today and some flares because everything on the boat's out of date basically and if I get caught by the sea ocean police or whatever they're called here in Australia they'll have a field day. So at least I got a EPIRB flares and a horn like a air powered horn so today so that those things are ticked off. Yeah that's, that's 500 bucks gone. So yeah anyway thanks for all the support guys you guys make a big difference to how we can do this and it makes us feel way better about spending this much time and effort making all these videos. See you tomorrow, probably. Anyway, bye-bye. Till then.